Take it away, buddy. All right, so today I'm gonna to be talking about puppy proofing your home. Um, so this little fellow right here is my dog Apollo. Um, about 11 years ago. Sorry, we have to. I'm, the music is going. So <laughs> here, let's just keep. No, just um, keep, no, no, no my dear. Just um, um, <laughs> yeah. So so this is him. Um, I think this is around like two to three months of age. I did found these basic pictures on Facebook, and so I couldn't really figure out what they actually took them. Um, so when puppy proofing your home. Um, it's a great task to give to kids so they can feel like they're having a big part in um, getting their puppy. Um, there's a couple things you need to consider. Uh, some of those being poisonous plants, food, um, no-no zones, or like places that they shouldn't go, um, and just some other like general things. Um, first one being poisonous plants. I think this really should be called um, outdoor toxicants because plants of any variety can literally have so many toxins inside of them. Um, if you go on like the ASPCA like list or something, there's like I think 150, if not more, like plants that have been registered to, registered to be toxic to dogs. Um, some of the couple one, some of them that I found here um, I thought were interesting. Um, buckeyes. I know we have those like very popular in Indiana. Uh, my grandpa and I actually used to throw them at each other. Um, but as it turns out, a succulent is a neurotoxin, um, and and like. Increased doses and without like using activated charcoal, um, it can like go from severe vomiting, dilated pupils, and into a coma. Um, so that's obviously something you should work, look out for. Um, another one that was really cool um, is taxine, which I guess has been used for centuries actually as a um, toxicant for suicide in humans. Um, but they're starting to become very popular as hedge butches, butches, bushes, um, and like around like family homes. Um, so the dog can actually ingest those. Interestingly, interestingly enough, the only part of the plant that is not toxic is those little red berries. Um, I thought that, that would actually be a you would think more, just yeah, because there'd be like more concentration. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the and taxine actually goes completely unnoticed in the dog until they just die, um, and typically they're going to die from cardiac failure. So if, if you keep taking your dog to a vet on like a regular regular basis, they can probably detect something like an arrhythmia in the heart, um, but yeah, just something to look out for. Um, another thing I thought was really cool is um, like in daffodils, um, the like the bulb of the plant, um, actually in most plants, has the highest concentration of all of the toxin. So um, in certain plants, like all of it can be uh, can be toxic, might be said in the U, like just the berry isn't toxic, and then sometimes only the bulb will really be toxic because it has a high enough concentration to do something. So moving on to food, um, I feel like these are pretty popular. Um, chocolate obviously has a toxin in it called theobromine, um, and doc the darker the chocolate, actually, the higher the toxicity. I think at about 0.1 ounces per pound, um, dark chocolate is like very toxic um, to dogs, um, but one of the biggest things about all this is consumption is dependent upon the size of the animal and also how much they eat. Um, more grapes and raisins, um, the toxin inside of that is still unknown, but um, raisins, since they're more dried up and they have more concentration, um, they are going to be more toxic to a dog than actual grapes. Um, cooked bones or like chicken bones, anything that's very easily splinterable would not be good for them to chew on. Um, so make sure to like throw all those away. Um, <coughs> scraps Keep the, the garbage cans someplace yes. where they get yep. that's in my over. that's in my general stuff. So. Oh, <laughs> see how much we're partners here? Yeah, buddy. Yeah. No plan. Um, so then also chewing gum and candy um, has a toxin it called xylitol and it causes the pancreas to immediately release insulin, um, reducing the blood sugar like to a very low number, making them hypoglycemic and can cause liver failure. Um, and yeah. you can put some peanut butters. Yeah, because it's used as an artificial sweetener. It's an artificial sweetener, and I haven't seen it any in any of the major brands, but I think if you go to some health food stores that have some like off brands of uh, peanut butter, I haven't done that, I should, it might have xylitol in there, but very toxic. Yeah. Yep. People have, their dogs have found a uh, bunch of gum on the dresser and ate it all and then died. And then yep. Died. Crazy. Um, more, uh, uh, there's yeast. Um, so kind of 
think about it, it makes the dough rise um, because it creates a gas inside. Um, so that's exactly what it's going to do in the intestine. So typically it's um, not going to be consumed in a large enough quantity to do anything. It'll just have a gassy puppy for a little while. Um, but like if it's consumed in a large amount, it can like actually rupture the intestines. Um, so that would not be good. Um, and another one would be like fat drippings or underneath um, a grill or oven. Um, it can, by eating all of that fat, they can cause pancreatitis, so. Yeah, and one time I was walking with some of my dogs and a lady came up and said, hey, can I pet your dogs? And I go, oh, sure, no problem. She goes, my dog just died a month ago from licking the fat off the bottom of the barbecue grill in her backyard. It's insane. You don't, yeah. you don't really think about it. Yeah. But yeah, obviously puppies are like babies. They'll get into anything oh. and they're definitely more mobile. So you have to watch everything. So now, no-no zones. Um, one of our biggest ones when we had Apollo, or yeah, when he was like little, was the garage. Um, not only can they like get lost easy inside of a garage, like Apollo would constantly get underneath um, the car. I don't know why, he just like thought it was fun. Um, but then also in antifreeze, um, there's a toxin called ethylene glycol, um, which is very sweet smelling to dogs. Um, so they'll go over and lick it up. Um, but basically, um, the metabolism of glycolic and oxalic acid forms these crystals inside of their body and they go and it starts damaging other intestines. Um, and the kidneys too. Yeah, yes. And uh, now they have started not using ethylene glycol as much in antifreeze. They use a substance called propylene glycol, but it's still like something to look out for when you're buying antifreeze. Yeah, and so for some reason that substitute a lot of people don't think it works as good in the vehicles, so there's a lot of this out there. And what they're trying to do is they add, if you ever shop for antifreeze, some of you don't, I'm sure, sometimes they'll have this ethylene glycol in it, but then they'll say with a bittering agent to try to get rid of the sweetness, but they still, most mechanics like this over that propylene stuff. Um, other places would be like the laundry room. There's just a ton of chemicals in there. Um, if something were to fall over, um, they could, like the fumes could cause like blindness in them and also irritate the lungs. Um, so that's something to look out for. Um, toy rooms also, it's just choking hazards and like intestinal blockages everywhere. Um, little do like dogs love to just go chew on things. Um, so those little toy cars can easily be swallowed and then get lodged in the throat um, or just tie everything up. Um, and like we said earlier with the plants, garden and flower beds. So lastly, some general stuff. Um, not that you're going to be passing the bong or cigarette to your dog anytime soon. Um, but it is like a lot of times That's a disclaimer, just, all right. Yeah. But I, so over the summer, I um, interned in New York City. And honestly, I never thought there would be so many dogs in New York City as there are. Um, and not as many smokers as there are. So people are constantly smoking cigarettes outside and they'll finish half of one, they might not just, they'll just drop it on the ground. So it's full of tobacco and nicotine. Tobacco is gonna like be just as harmful, harmful to dogs as it is to humans. Um, on top of that, nicotine actually does like severely more damage than it does to humans. Um, it can damage the lining of the stomach and um, intestines and digestive tract. Um, and then on the opposite side of that, THC, although there's no like toxin in it that's going to actually hurt your dog, um, they have no idea what's going on. Like they do not realize that they're ingesting weed or something. So it's gonna cause them extreme stress and anxiety when now they can't think as clearly as they used to be able to when they're wondering what happened. Um, like Dr. Alwich said, uh, trash cans. Um, Maybe just like putting them, if you know you're, you have a puppy that likes to go through the trash, um, putting them on top of like a dresser or um, on top of a shelf, um, just a place that they can't get into it. Um, my dog loves to just go through and eat Kleenexes. I don't know why, but they're soft, something to chew on. Um, but in that, I also put gum a lot of times in my Kleenexes, like throwing it away. And so he could easily ingest gum, which could have xylitol. Um, if you're in the bathroom, uh, you throw away toothpaste that isn't used. They have sharp teeth. They can easily bite through the plastic that's surrounding the toothpaste. Um, razors you throw away. Uh, sanitary supplies, old medications. Um, yeah, clothing piles. Paula loves to eat socks. 
um, and they love to get stuck inside the sofas. He obviously has no problem laying on a sofa. Um, thinks he's a human. And also, kind of like electrical cords, they look like ropes. Like they can just keep pulling on them and then it leads to a new place, to a new place, and now they're at an electrical outlet and they can become electrocuted. Um, or like less than that, um, they're still going to have like burns inside of their mouth. Yeah, and they can bite down through the cord. Yep. You know, and get there. One last thing about it, um, I think it was last year there was some article someplace where Great Dane had eaten 14 socks. I don't and, know what it is with socks. Yeah, and uh, they had like they had done a surgery. They had to open them up, take all the socks off, and then they lined up all the socks. It was quite a picture, you know. Here's what we found in the stomach, guys. Something about four, about fourteen socks. That's so many socks. You'd think that it wouldn't taste that good. Well, exactly. <laughs> but you know. um, and then yeah, so this was this is just that was Apollo at like three months, and then this is it now. Okay, so great. And, and he's very, very well behaved because you took him to that place in Fishers, right? Remember you were talking about that? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the first training. Friends. Yep. What's it called? First Friends. First Friends, yeah. The, we had a German Shepherd in one of our other classes, and oh my gosh, it was impressive. He, he was, was a beautiful dog, too. He was beautiful, and he was so well behaved. He was like seven months, and of course I was playing with him with the laser, too, so you know, I spoiled something. Okay, questions, <laughs> comments? Experiences with puppies, especially chewing things. Have you ever seen weird things they do? Yes. Uh, when we got JT, they said that he was going to lose like all of his teeth within a couple weeks, and that he'd chew on literally everything. And we had issues with him chewing on like the coffee tables and the edges of furniture. Okay. Just and so we bought him like a bunch of toys to try to distract him from that. Okay. Now here's a little. Pointer, and you know, I've got those two border collies. This is good for them because they get it moist and it's not really hard and it will last them a month the way they're going on it. Just I found this out, you know, I, I watched them and you know, they don't, they're not big, you know, they're like 20 pounds, 25 pounds, and they last forever, but I can just tell it's very therapeutic for them because they like to chew on it. And so that's the thing. Okay, so yeah, uh, they're going to lose their baby teeth. A lot of times they end up swallowing the baby teeth. A lot of times somebody will say, I had a dog, a puppy, and I never saw a tooth. Or some will find one. They, a lot of them go down through the track. Uh, any other experiences with weird things puppies have eaten or done? My dog was a puppy. Um, I like took off a necklace on my nightstand and it swallowed it. And. Um, we had to like brush to the emergency vet in the middle of the night because they wrapped it on his intestines. Yeah, oh yeah. The intestines are incredible. Sometime I should, I'll tell you a quick little story. <coughs> we were doing these surgeries on sheep where they were in heat and we would, my graduate students and I, we would do surgery, mid-ventral laparotomy, and go down and bring the ovaries up and we would electrocauterize all the big follicles. Zap, 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 zap. It's an experimental thing. Then we would put the whole track back, sew it up with non-absorbable suture because then three days later we're going to go back in and see if new follicles grew. So three days later for all these sheep we open up the same incision line, it hasn't really healed enough to not use it, so we open up again. And uh, of course the intestines are always there, they're moving, that's a good sign. But one sheep we brought up and we had left something in during the first surgery. Because you know we didn't have like a lot of help like coming this but now they you should see what they do in human surgery because my the, my past graduate students got a college everything is counted and one time they had to go through the garbage and spent hours trying to find one thing because they couldn't somebody didn't tally it down luckily they found it in the garbage because then it wasn't anyway we drew up the intestines and the uterus and stuff we had left one of those gauze, you know, they call four by fours or sometimes they're called sponges, you know, and they've got that little uh, square pattern, you know, if you look, you guys know that. The intestine had wrapped around it from the outside and was trying to digest it. I had to pull that gauze off the surface, the outer surface of the intestine, and the intestine had that pattern left on it. That's how was trying to absorb that from the, you know, it was a, a incredible. And if we wouldn't have went back in, that could have caused problems because, you know, the intestine was trying to wrap around it. I mean, just from the outside. Yeah. So it, it's a, those things are 
that's amazing. So if you have something swallowed and it's a linear, especially a linear thing, like floss, that works like a little uh, uh, saw in there for the intestines because they're always moving and trying to digest things. Okay, other experiences with puppies eating things because they will. Here we go. So a few years ago, she wasn't a puppy, but we rescued a beagle. And one of the first few days that we had her, she got off the leash and got into our garage and ended up eating rat poison. Mm -hmm. So we had to rush her to the vet, yeah. and she was there for two or three days, but she recovered. So that's yeah. just another thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you, you, you name it. Uh, okay, here's another thing. Uh, one time I was at the necropsy floor down at ADDL, and they a puppy had died, and they were necropsying it to see what it was. I was stunned of all the things it had in its stomach. A push thumbtack was in the stomach. Uh, there were two, three other things, a bobby pin. Things that, like, what are you doing? But see, there's no logic. I can't chew on this, right? So it, that's why we, whenever we have dogs, you know how paranoid I am? Check the floor, check the floor, <coughs> even with the ferret. Check the floor, because I'll never forget that stomach. When they opened it up, a thumbtack? Are you kidding me? You know, you, you just can't make these things up. And so there's no rhyme or reason what they'll eat. And one of my puppies the other day, puppies are bad, was chewing on something, and then, of course, when you walk up to it, they, that means they're going to swallow, right? You've seen that, like, I'm going to swallow. Okay, so I'm going, what did you just swallow? Because we live on the country, there's all kinds of stuff. Well, pretty soon, she throws up, it was uh, the female, Annie. Here she had swallowed about this square, a walnut shell. And, you know, that could have blocked the yeah. intestine. I didn't have any idea what it was. It could have been, like, the outer part of a walnut. You know how soft that is. But that wouldn't have wouldn't have passed, and luckily she threw it up. But I mean, that much square of a walnut shell, but it's not gonna be digested at all. Other comments, questions? Yeah, watch those puppies, dogs, any dog, but puppies more so. Okay, let's stop.